Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another show of the Uncle Ricky Broadcast Studio here. Today, I want to talk about Apple versus Android. And my podcast is entitled, Stop Drinking the Apple Kool-Aid. Now, I have to admit that I'm a bit of an Apple fanboy myself. As a matter of fact, I own several Apple devices, one of which is the original... Apple iPod, this is the iPod Classic, and uh, it is the 120 gig model, and let me tell you, I take this everywhere, but when I do buy a new device, I always get a really skookum case, really thick rubberized case, because I tend to drop things a lot, so I have one, two, three, four devices in front of me, um, Two of them are Apple, one of them is Android, and one of them is, is Samsung. And I have never, ever, when I drop something, broken it because I always go out and get a really good case. So, it, this is not to defend Android against Apple. This is just to point out my personal preferences and differences why I chose the Motorola Atrix Superphone with Android over the iPhone 4 because there are some distinct differences. I also have the Apple iTouch, and I just absolutely love the Apple iTouch. So I went out and I did some research on the internet, and I found a fellow that, that mirrored almost identically the thoughts that I had when comparing Android and Apple hardware and software. And so what I've done is I, I printed out his comments, and he did actually just as good a job or better than I could have done in this podcast. So we're going to go through the reasons why. If you're looking to get a new mobile device, a new super phone, uh, you might want to take a look at these reasons. Okay, number one. What, what I'll do first is I will um, go quickly through them, and then we'll go into more detail and depth. It says, uh, traded my iPhone 4 for an Atrix 4G and really quite happy. It says, number one reason, fingerprint recognition. And yes, here is the Superphone. And on the back of this Superphone is a little scanner here that you just swipe your finger and boom, it has biometrics built into it and you get into your phone just by swiping your finger. Extremely handy. Number one, smooth edges and it's lighter in your pocket. And they're talking about the Motorola Atrix compared to the iPhone. It says, my son showed me how his iPhone 4 has left a permanent imprint in his jeans front pocket. He even got a spot where the sharp edge of the iPhone case has actually cut a hole through his jeans. By contrast, my Atrix has rounded corners like the iPhone 3 used to and is much lighter so I barely feel or see it sitting in my pocket. Now, for me, I went out and got, uh, of course, a case. And I'll, I'll hold it up and it's called the Otter Defender. Don't know if you can see it in the camera angle shot, but this is a fantastic case. I bought the heaviest dutiest case, heaviest dutiest? The heaviest case I could possibly get. It comes with a variety of things. It has a plastic screen protector, really tough plastic, and it has a rubberized molded case that goes over it. Then it has an ingenious hard shelled case that you can snap it in. So you put one side of it in and it just snaps in like this. Now the beauty of this Defender case from Otter is you can put the screen facing out or if you want to protect the screen at all costs, just put the screen facing in and it will always protect and then you have the rubberized um, case out in front so it will always protect your phone. So I, I hardly, highly suggest that if you're going to get a new super phone, any kind of a super phone, go out and get an OtterBox case for it. Okay, so number three reason that this person picked the Motorola Atrix over the iPhone. The four inch screen is half an inch larger than the iPhone. The extra half an inch real estate really does make a difference, surprisingly. Number four, tons of apps. Some are free on Android, while the same ones on iPhone cost money, and he makes a point. Case in point, Angry Birds, which is a really popular game, is free on Android, but is a paid app on the iPhone. Amazon's own Android App Store, which AT&T doesn't presently allow for Atrix, but they promise to fix soon, also offers a daily paid Android app for free. Now, here in Canada, I'm with Bell, and maybe they can come up with a daily paid Android app for free as well. Number five reason. Excellent camera and 720p HD video recording, plus, according to what I've been experiencing, I'm recording audio in stereo. I'm a blogger, so I'm going to use this device 
the Motorola Atrix and put an external microphone on it, which is a high definition um, camera, and I'm going to start blogging with it as well. So I've got a, a little recording studio right in my pocket, and that's why I chose the Atrix as well. Very, very powerful dual processor. Reason number six. Complete app integration. When I saw my new social app like Facebook, when I add a new social app like Facebook to my phone and select to share something like a photo, the Android system immediately offers Facebook as an option to send and share to. With the iPhone, you're stuck with whatever sharing options are set in the operating system. Sure, you could launch the iPhone Facebook app and share the photo, but that's, it's really refreshing to see a wealth of choices immediately available to me when I'm already in the photo app and just took a picture that I wanted to share. So it's one of convenience. Here's what I found about Apple. Apple's a very closed or what we call proprietary system. That means Apple only has Apple stuff. Um, another case in point, if you want to recharge one of your devices, you have to get the Apple co cable. There's, you, there's, no other off, there's no other cable that you can get to recharge an Apple device. But with Android devices, it's, it's a common cable. Number seven, complete Google integration. Now, I live in Gmail. I have been living in Gmail for the past year. It is so powerful. It has got everything you need. It's got Google Docs, a free word processor. It's got a shareable calendar that I share with my wife, and my wife shares her calendar with me so I know where when she's in a meeting. It's got uh, one of the best readers out there. It's got, it's got just tons and tons and tons of apps and labs for Google. Now, Google owns Android, and Google also owns YouTube. So they've got an extremely large infrastructure in which to work with the Android. So it says, Motorola automatically links into your other contacts like Facebook, Twitter, Live.com once you add those accounts to your phone. So my contacts listing include a plethora of information about my friends, including their Facebook birthdays, which also show in my calendar their latest social postings, and my last few personal interactions with them, text, calls, emails, etc. Another part of this integration is whenever a friend changes their profile picture, it, i got to turn the page, <laughs> it automatically updates their picture in my phone's contacts. When I was, because I was prepared to buy an iPhone, I was, I had my wallet out, I had my, you know, and I was waving it in the air, I want an iPhone 4. Until a friend of mine who works in the cellular network industry said, you know what, Android does so much more and there's so many more benefits to an Android device over an iPhone device. And, and this is why I'm having this podcast here, my personal choices. Number eight, micro USB standard connection for charging and computer connectivity. Really nice that I now have the same USB connection as my Kodak HD pocket camera and my daughter's phone. We keep a single cable in the car so we can charge any of these devices on the go. Again, if you have an Apple iPhone or an iTouch and you're out and you want to recharge it and you don't have the cable, you are stuck. That is it. It's proprietary. Remember, proprietary means things that are only specifically related to that company. They make it, they build it, they own it, they design it. It's theirs and they don't share their technology with anyone else. This is another part of the reason why I went over to Android. Android wants to be open market. They want to, they welcome competition. Number nine. I love these points. It acts as a USB memory stick. Now this is really fascinating. The ability is built into Android. You plug it into a computer and you get several options for connectivity. One of them is USB. It allows you to access the phone's entire memory, internal and micro SD, so that you can easily transfer contents to or from the phone to any computer. I can't stress how nice it is no longer to be married to a single computer. I also can't stress how, how nice it is to have a reply on iTunes to manage my phones to not have a re to rely on iTunes to manage my phone's content. Okay, so here's the deal. On the Motorola Atrix, it comes with 16 gig internal memory. On the iPhone, you can buy the model 16 gig, 32 bit, gig, and 64, but you pay exponentially for that memory. And you cannot, you cannot, no matter what you do, upgrade the memory in an Apple device. On the Motorola Atrix, on this super phone that I picked up for my wife and I, comes with 16 gig of internal memory, but you can also put an additional 32 gig chip in there, and now you have a phone that has 48 gigs of memory.
So there's a couple of advantages. One, the battery. I can get a battery for this Motorola Atrix for $16 on the internet. Now, I can change that battery in less than 10 seconds. Try doing that on an iPhone. iPhone, you can't. It's a sealed unit. It's proprietary, and you have to send it to Apple. They crack open the case, they put a new battery in it, and then they send it back to you. So what happens in the meantime if you have to get a battery change and you don't have an Apple iPhone? All of your stuff, sure, you can get a loaner, but it's, it's a big hassle. With the battery thing, I can just pop it in within 5 or 10 seconds, and away we go. All right. Okay, uh, number 10. Over-the-air updates. I received my first firmware upgrade from Motorola about a week ago. It came directly to the phone, directly to the phone. You don't have to hook it up to anything. It's seamlessly in the background. What a breath of fresh air to be able to upgrade my phone while it's just sitting on the coffee table. No cable required, no computer required. If you check the list of requirements on any iPhone, iPad, or iTouch, you'll find that the computer is absolutely required. Not so for Android phones. These things are computers in their own right. And that's true. Number 11. Google Maps with spoken turn-by-turn -turn directions. This amazing free app from Google is available only on Android phones. It uses accurate GPS and depicts your location on a map which is capable of various layers, satellite, traffic conditions, terrain, etc. Zoom into a city using just the, mayor, the, the map layer or all the other layers off and you'll see a 3D renderings of all the buildings. Panning and changing direction or perspective is butter smooth and I've tried that myself. It's, it's gorgeous. Get directions to a location and you'll be brought to the Google Navigation app which speaks directions to you while you're driving your, your car successfully. And it, it, I prefer this app to my car's dedicated GPS device. A lot of people love Google Maps. Number 12, and this is a big one, folks. Voice to text and text to voice. Speaking commands to my phone and speaking out texts and social updates has become so second nature to me now that I hardly find it necessary to type any more. While I'm in the car, the excellent Vlingo app, free, and came with the phone, and I'm using it, and it is fantastic. It speaks out text messages to me loud and clear and lets me reply just by speaking. you, you got to try this app. I can update Facebook or text a friend safely now while driving. It's also nice to hear a text spoken to me while I'm busy washing the dishes so I can choose whether or not it's important enough to stop what I'm doing to reply to. Voice recognition is built into Android and is available wherever a text input is found in any app throughout the system. Oh, and by the way, I've tried it with my Bluetooth headset. works beautifully with Bluetooth. You can just say, send Pat an email, and then you say the message you said, send, and you don't have to touch a keyboard. It is incredible. Number 13, and this is a big one for me too. HDMI, it has a connection on the phone. On the phone, ladies and gentlemen, that hooks up to an HDMI connector on any big screen television. So I'm in the seminar business and we're launching our seminar program. I can put my entire seminar course on that 32 gig extra chip and it would only take one or two gigs for my entire slideshow presentation. I can teach anywhere because I've got that in PowerPoint form. Hook it up to an HDMI TV and boom, I'm done. I don't have, need a projector, I don't need anything. All I need is a TV with an HDMI output and by the way, it does shoot in HD. So it says HDMI out rules. I went on a small trip to visit friends who had moved a few hundred miles away and, and brought my HDMI cable with me. Unlike the iPhone 4, HDMI is built into the device and the cable is included. It was an easy thing to connect my phone to my friend's living room TV. The phone becomes a remote control for the content on the TV. You can view photos, videos, and play music from the phone. No frame rate issues, no skewing or any uh, um, abnormalities at all. The 720p HD videos I shot earlier that day were a joy to watch on his large screen. The quality was so good, my friend remarked how surprised he was to see actual HD content rendering from such a small device. This is what sold me when I saw it, and I, my cousin bought this phone, the, the uh, Motorola Atrix, uh, a week before we got it, and when he hooked it up to the TV, oh, it was just beautiful. We were out to um, 
a 40th wedding anniversary, and he took some high-def videos. And the sound and the picture were just beyond spectacular. So when I saw that, that helped me make my decision as well. Number 14, Flash for websites. Apple has said, forget it, Flash. Now, Apple is saying that Flash is a dying technology. It might be dying, but it's going to hang around for a few more years. I used the excellent Pulse app when I had my iPhone 4 and routinely found myself staring at a blank white screen when I happened to link to a news article which contained a Flash video, as so many do. NHL's on there, NFL's on there with Flash, Disney's on there with Flash. Now, on my Atrix 4G, I use the same Pulse app, but can now see and play the same content I was missing all along. This is a huge benefit for me, as I no longer have to make an Evernote with the URL so I can remember to view it at home, where I couldn't view it on the road. Okay, so now for the cons. You've, you've heard 14 points of pros. Now let's take a look at a few cons. Battery life. It's good, but it's not great. I start my day with a fully charged phone around 6.30 a.m., and by the time I'm back in bed around 11 p.m., boy, this guy's got a tough schedule, I typically find myself 20% or lower at the end of my day. Everyone uses their phone differently, and I am sometimes a heavy user. Now, I have to confess that it's been an automatic reaction for me to when I come home, I, at the end of the day, before I go to bed, I plug in my, my cellular phone devices because I want them fully charged up for the next day. Now let's consider this. I can buy a battery for the Motorola Atrix <coughs> excuse me, for $16, that, that extended battery. That particular battery promises no less than 500 complete full recharges. So for $16, I can recharge that 500 times, which is almost a year and a half. So $16 for almost 18 months of use, and that's, that's what they promised. You could probably still get you know, a little bit more, maybe closer to two years of use. 16 bucks, that's not a bad deal at all. Okay, another con, or are there any more cons? Ah, no Netflix as of yet, but it is coming. We have heard that Netflix will be coming as soon as they do updates to the operating system. Now, I have to tell you something. This is a dual-core processor phone. Now, there is no software out there at this moment that can, that can fully appreciate or use the dual-core processors. Uh, right now, we're on an uh, operating system in Android called Froyo. The next one up is called Gingerbread, which is going to be released very, very soon. And the next one after that is called Ice Cream Sandwich. Now, I was thinking for the future with this device, because when Ice Cream Sandwich is released, maybe in the following months, or six months, or nine months, it will then take full uh, control of the dual core processors in the phone. I mean, even the, um, the iPad 2 has a dual core processor. So this will, will actually become more valuable as time goes on when they tap into those and can fully f use those dual core processors. So he says, overall, I'm happy with my decision to trade my iPhone 4 for an Atrix 4G. And then he goes on to say stuff about AT&T, but he is extremely happy. And I thought this would be a really good way to say, this is exactly what I was thinking as well. That if you're thinking about getting a super phone, and let's face it, folks, these things are, are not phones anymore. They're computer devices. As a matter of fact, um, my wife's cousin, Robert, he owns a bed and breakfast in Canmore, Alberta. And he is running his entire business now from his Motorola Atrix and Android. He can get emails, he can get pictures, he can, he's, he's taken all of his contacts from Outlook and all of the things that he needs to and integrated them, and we, and we created a Gmail account for him, integrated them into Gmail and it works absolutely seamlessly. Customer phones him up, it doesn't matter where he is in the world, he can say, okay, looks at his camera, all his bookings are on his calendar in Google, say, yep, we've got, uh, we've got space in this particular day, clicks on it and puts them right there, it's all done. He is completely running a business right from his Android device. So if you're looking for a smartphone, instead of looking for the iPhone, and to be honest with you, I had blinders because I wanted to believe that Apple had the most superior product. They're very, very good at their marketing. But when I took a look at Android and Motorola Atrix, I, I said, you know what? These are not as elegant. These products are not as elegant as Apple. That, there is, there's, no, there's no doubt. And they're not as pretty. 
But guess what? They've got open architecture, they invite competition, and what competition does is it keeps everybody else sharp. It keeps you forcing and driving new technologies and getting it out into the marketplace. Now, the Android marketplace has some really awful apps, but so does the iPhone. I mean, how many fart apps do you need? But here's the interesting thing. On the Android side, there are over 80 manufacturers that you can get 80 handsets for Android. On the iPhone, there is only one, period. So you can get some real dogs if you choose badly on the Android side, or you can get really, really good products. Now, the reason we got this Motorola Atrix is because it won the best uh, contest for, or the best prize for, at, for a new product at CES, that's the Consumer Electronics Show of 2011. So I did tons of research before I purchased this product, and I feel that this was the better of the two platforms between Apple and Android. I hope this helps you reach your decision. What I'll do is I will include this fellow's notes and his links uh, just below this video so you can take a look for yourself. And uh, if you'd like to comment on the show and tell me what you've bought, give me an email at eflexonics at gmail.com and I will respond. Thanks so much for joining us, folks. We'll see you again, Uncle Ricky, for the Uncle Ricky Radio Show. Bye-bye, take care, and keep going with those Android devices. I love them. All right, bye-bye.